Drop your weapon. Uh, I need a weapon. Uh, uh, I need a weapon. We need a head uh, check. Uh, I need a weapon. Uh, uh, I need a weapon. Uh, okay. Fight for the Empire. I'll say it. Just a minute. This is like, like Batman's villain. Didn't, didn't double check on that one. English. That was it. English. Welcome, welcome to Monkers Max Hawaii. The chat. <laughs> I guess. I guess we're growing mushrooms. Uh it's just been rainy out there. I don't know. That's like the new garden, the octopus's garden out there. Well, <clears throat> the new Build Back Better bill passed the House. Now it has to go over to the Senate. I think that's how it works. They're about to approve the booster for all, which is good because it'll stop the spread of the very <coughs> nasty plague thing going on. Now, some people say, you know, you can get your vaccination shot and still be a carrier <laughs> with jazz hands. You can still be a carrier, and that's true. You can have fully like fully vaccinated you're not going to get your antibody resistant and then you can get the the virus and your body will battle it off that's the idea and as your body's battling it off you're infectious at that point and that's absolutely epidemiologically true but you're you know actually infectious little less time your body battles it off and then it dies so it's not you're not a carrier for that long as opposed to someone who is not oh, immune and so the booster shot is going to put down that category too so even the ones with the vaccine are going to be spreading it even less so all that stuff i mean it's gonna it's gonna get better. Hawaii is number one, or number two, I think, 71% vaccinated. So, and we also have like a 1% contagiousness rate as opposed to the mainland. It's like 6% and stuff like that. They complain. They go, we don't have those mask laws in Hawaii. I mean, you have them in Hawaii, but we don't have them in o Ohio. How do you explain that? It's like, well, look at the <laughs> six percent thing. Anyways, now for the real news. This is the one. This is the... Remember, I had a little audio problems yesterday, and yeah, use the audio stuff. Mm -hmm. But then, sub, sub supernatural. I'm saying hex coming over in my direction can disrupt audio. Oh, yesterday there was some disruption. And then in the afternoon, what happens? The witch comes over. Kind of like, ah, uh, for a brief moment of time. Okay, so, do I correlate those two? Well, how about this correlation, okay? This one. I'm gonna get my K2 meter off for this one. Jeez. I tell you what. Okay, so I'm supposed to be told when the witch comes over. <laughs> we, have, we have a problem. Houston, we have a spirit. Okay, I was supposed to be told whenever that one comes over because it's like legal, illegal, police are called stuff. And it's... So, a phone call comes to my phone and I answer my phone and it's my mom trying to tell me that one's coming over. But I couldn't hear because on the phone, because I'm on the phone going, hello? Hello, any spirits there? No. I'm going to the phone. Hello? It's my mom. And it's like. <coughs> 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 <coughs>
<laughs> and I'm like, what? What? And then it hangs up. Mm-hmm. And so I call right back. And then I'm like, then I catch my mom. I'm like, hey, what was that? I couldn't hear anything. It was like, <laughs> and she says to me, oh, um, blankety blank, the witch is here and she'll be here for just a short amount of time. She was here for half an hour. And I'll let you know when she goes. She never really did that. So I checked the CCC camera and there's my mom in the kitchen, leaning over the sink, trying to call me. And when that phone call's happening with the <laughs> the witch is like leaning over her shoulder, trying to find out who are you talking to? This sort of thing. True. And then she brought some bad news too, so I'm not sure about that, but just in case, hey, Don, if you're watching this, shout outs, hope everything's good for you. Uh oh. Because he just don't trust the stuff. It's like, oh shoot, look at this, man. Oh no. Oh no, we don't have much time for the news. Uh, who cares? Okay, so we're going to the news. That was the news, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and you know why? It's not here. No, they delivered the paper. There it is. Okay. Uh, oh, plus I got the real one, but I might as well just go for here. No child left behind because it was no soldier left behind. Mr. President Bush said no child left behind and all stuff like that. And he says, hey, uh, speaking of presidents, you know, I just want to say, hey, the president's going to get a camera up his butt. It's called a colonoscopy. It's just the medical part of medical history. But it's going to be out down under on anesthesia so that makes Kamala Harris the first president <laughs> while wow. wow. wow, this guy's getting his butt checked he's getting a butt check and Kamala's gonna be I'm the first woman president <laughs> don't tell Mitch O'Connell <laughs> he'll turn into a turtle Brumpens. <laughs> Uh, okay, so no child left behind turns in no no soldier left behind turns into no child left behind turns into after the pandemic. Everyone's behind one whole year, math and English. Cause hey, this is Hawaii. You don't need English. You got pidgin. <laughs> what you need English for? You got pidgin. And uh, Senator Daniel Inouye, who's a World War II veteran, and he's been around for I don't know since what. Like, past World War II, <laughs> don't like that. He's like World War II veteran, got into politics, and he was Senator of Hawaii for the longest time because he was like, oh, the guy's Japanese, oh, really? Oh, and he's a Senator? Oh, ooh, ooh, it turned into a thing at first when he was young into politics. It was like, oh my gosh. And he lost an arm as a veteran, World War II, so he has like, a one-armed Japanese guy. But he's a veteran of World War II. So they kind of accepted him on Capitol Hill. He like met JFK. Let me shake your hand. Uh, uh. But um, he was so long in politics that he actually kind of got good at it. He was kind of pretty powerful. He pulled for Hawaii a lot of years as senator. And they kept reelecting him here because he's just like national. And then he passed away. Oh gosh, when he passed away, it was like he was on his deathbed and he was relinquishing the crown. He was naming his successor like he had become royalty or something. It was really weird. But nowadays they just name the airport after him and they name this destroyer, uh, US Naval destroyer after him. And the destroyer came into the waters of Honolulu yesterday. There it is coming in. The destroyer, the USS <clears throat> Daniel K. Inouye, and um, it was named Daniel K. Inouye Day. And I guess the sailors can take shore leave and pop on over to the local Daniel K. Inouye Library <laughs> or take a neighborhood flight to the neighbor islands in the Daniel K. Inouye Airport. <coughs> I think enough said there. Okay. What else is going on? It was like, oh, oh Daniel Inouye, we miss you. Do the do the freaking holographic show. He's back in the Senate, U.S. State Senate. So they're uh, gonna. Uh, oh, 
Mm, leaf blowing disrupts neighbors' holiday feast. Oh my. Oh, they're gonna sell this uh, place over in Wainai. Affordable housing. Oh, the cheeks are back. It's uh, road work ahead. Wahini volleyball. Hey, Wahini volleyball. Wahini volleyball. And uh, I don't know, like nothing's going on with what happened to football. It's kind of phasing out. So we got out of the sports thing. Couple a woman accused of church sex trafficking. I, I are those words in the proper order? What the heck? <laughs> Fifty-year-old couple a woman is accused of securing passports and funneling fraudulent donations to leaders of Philippine-based church. Philippines-based church to fund opulent lifestyles and sex trafficking scheme. As young as 12, what is wrong? Oh, uh, Kiloboy, appoint, uh, the, the appointed son of God. Well, that's some church. Um, the appointed son of God and his uh, 12-year-old teenage brides he sells online. I, yeah, I would say that's bad. Glad you got those guys. <laughs> what? Do you support the 350,000 seat stadium to replace a lost stadium in Halava if the cost was held down to $400 million? <laughs> it's all Chama, Chama Jang. Okay, maybe, no, just redo a lost stadium 24%. So a quarter there. Ah, uh, 43% are still, yeah, leave them at the UH. Hmm. Ugh. What a, what a mess that is. Okay. Now, okay, some letters to the editor. On what to the holidays? Uh, oh. Oh, look, political cartoon. Make America Great Again hat. The infrastructure plan fixes crumbling roads, changes bridges, expands access to clean water, creates millions of new jobs. Biden must have been reading your hat. Okay. Now. Yeah. Um, yeah, when Pumpkinhead was leading the Republican, he made some promises, but it didn't go through. Oh, well, <laughs> it was all something. It went off the rail and I don't, there's no, no, I don't know what to say. Okay, statistics didn't show true cost of tourism. Apparently, they're saying, how much does tours cost? All these tours come on and they do resources and everything. And that's one of them by uh, Mike Wildberger on Maui, because he's got wild burgers on Maui. But this one here, right? We'll, we'll check this one out, because this is another one of the same. That's why I skipped through that one so fast. Okay. Oh, tourism. Oh, because the consumption numbers show significant impact. <clears throat> When Hawaii Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism misuses statistics to support tourism, it is worrisome. A site article November 15th. State Chief Economic Eugene Tian said that the impact of tourism was on electricity and water was small, and that his data showed that the decrease in visitors day by 1% reduces electricity and water consumption by something less than 0.2% of what I don't know. Using these figures, if a visitor days were reduced by 100%, no tourists, Aaron Pettigrew, electricity and water consumption would be reduced by somewhere around 20%. That's not small. In 2019, a total of 10.4 million tourists came to Hawaii. Woohoo! There were, on average, about 250 tourists in Hawaii at any given time. Buying puka shell necklaces, drinking Mai Tais, and singing Chinese bubbles. <laughs> Getting arrested for having sex on the beach in Waikiki at night. Ooh, wait. And then they accounted for about 50% of the number of people presently, physically present in Hawaii. <clears throat> if they used somewhere around 20% of the electricity and water supply. They were used more per capita than residents, and that would be disturbing. Don Kawamoto, Kaimuki. And you're like, okay, yeah, got it, and all that. You're trying to. Why, why are they trying to figure out if tourists are taking up a bunch of. Taking up, they're taking our resources. We're on an island. We're not getting our shipments in. We're gonna die.
all the more for solar and wind power. <clears throat> Flights shaking up Diamond Head area. Many mornings my windows rattle as I'm crudely awoken by the sounds of low-flying helicopters and planes. These disruptive noises continue throughout the day and late into the evening. Over the last few years, there's been a significant increase in military and commercial flights around Diamond Head. I, I yeah, uh, just side note, yeah, there's a lot of, what's that helicopter? It's like, that's a little low. It's like, wait, I waved to him. Hey, I can see you. And when it comes to an increase in noise, military may be trying its best, but tourism industry is vital that the communities around the bases and tourist attractions should come first. Both residents and the visitors have long enjoyed the famous Diamond Head Eye. Some have returned. This beautiful, serene experience has become chaotic with multiple tour helicopters flying around the crater in rapid succession. You know what I mean, Clarice? How do you feel? How do visitors feel? How do I feel? I don't know. My psychiatrist, I talk to him every day in the mirror, says how I feel is important. And what about the residents who may already have to deal with these stressful sounds at home? Rules and regulations should be put in place and taken seriously to keep these distressful interruptions to a minimum. Alison Nakami, uh, Namiki Roberts Kapahulu. <laughs> There's this fly around, I don't know. One of these days, uh, stuff goes on. This is what stuff goes on. <clears throat> Economic disparity threatens our future. While the approach to Thanksgiving, my thoughts are turning towards the quality of life and providing feelings of gratitude, in addition to the importance of family, friends, and faith, and freedom, and in, in other F words, and the life sustaining society of qualities of clean water and enough food. Then my mind turns to the recent reports of extreme weather and increasing houselessness. Because homelessness is wrong. Because the houselessness, the interconnections between climate crisis and economic disparity are becoming more obvious and tragic. Yeah, because if you got nowhere to go and the storms are coming up, because oh, climate change. Oh, what's that? It's like look at the storms. But the seasons aren't the season. <clears throat> the difficulties of changing policies that will lead to improvement of these critical situations not only involves it in in sig. All right, we're gonna have to change accent. It not only involves the intrasigence, intrasigence, okay, here's a new vocab word, of intrasignance, what the heck? Of those who have power and wealth, the 1%, but also the, <laughs> what the thesaurus, and those also equally, equally, <laughs> all the other words are going, the equally difficult challenge of changing some culturally and systematic issues like nationalism, racism, religiousism, male dominanceism, the future is only as hopeful as our willingness to implant these changes. And in addition, this would enable to be happier Thanksgiving for the rest of us. The 99.9% .9 John Idol. Kailua. Thank you, John. That was, I, you must have put lots of effort into that. I don't know what insigence is. I, I, I'm lost. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm lost. Where am I? I'm lost. Which which one am I? Which one am I doing? I'm not. Okay, well, that's it. I gotta go get my um um uh, dictionary and look up in sig insignificance. <laughs> you guys have aloha time. Uh, my cram up time is tomorrow, so I'll see how that goes. Okay, aloha. Bye. Aloha. Go 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 go. Oh 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 oh. That way. Go that way. <laughs>